Hi, and welcome back to this week's Parsha Shir on Sefer Nesiva Shalom. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, this will be our last Parsha that we study here in this video Shir series in Sefer Nesiva Shalom. We spent uh, an entire year studying Sefer Orgut Yao, now an entire year studying Sefer Nesiva Shalom. We now completed with this Parsha the full cycle of Parshios through the year. Next week, in Ritz Hashem, Parshas Vayera, we'll go on to study a new Sefer for the year to come. Now, of course, you're all encouraged to continue to study Sefer Nesiva Shalom if you've enjoyed it, if you've enjoyed uh, the Slana Marebi's way of thinking and approaching uh, the Parshios of the Torah. He has a very unique and penetrating insight into every Parsha, multiple essays. We only studied one of the essays on each Parsha, there are many more to study. Nesiva Shalom is a fascinating personality with an incredible life and life story, which we talked about in the very beginning of the series. Uh, but he is the unique combination of uh, the Litvisher world, the Yeshivish world, the understanding of uh, strict Torah learning, and the Hasidic world, and actually multiple strands within the Hasidic world, and multiple worlds that he combines, so that every one of his essays has incredibly insightful, penetrating questions on the Parsha, clever questions on the Parsha, textual questions on the Parsha, which he addresses through the lens of Hasidus, but in a way that is extremely relevant, extremely contemporary, extremely personable, and extremely down-to-earth. I encourage you to continue to study it if you'd like. Today we will study the first essay that he has on Parsha Slech uh, in which he addresses himself to the question of the phrase Lech Lecha, go to yourself, lech lecha, and as Chazal say, lech lecha is letovascha, lehanascha. Hashem was telling Abraham Avinu to go to himself for his own good, for his own well-being. What exactly does that mean? What was Abraham supposed to go towards? What is the lech lecha of our parsha? But also more broadly addressing the question of nisayon, the question of tests. According to the Rambam and the Pirush Hamishnayos, lech lecha ma'artzcha is the first of the ten tests endured and uh, brought to Avram Avinu's life, which he excelled at, and which he succeeded at. And therefore, Nesir Shalom addressed himself to the question of what the purpose is, and what the nature is of these tests, these trials that Avram Avinu sustained. Thirdly, Nesir Shalom in this essay addresses himself to the question of why this test, and the final test, and the stage of bris Mila in between, are all phrased in the language of Halicha, all framed through the verb of walking, lech lecha me'artzacha, beginning, he's halech lefana ve'yetamim, in the case of bris mila, and lech lecha le'ertamoria, in the final test of the Akita, lech lecha walking, he's halech, walk, lech lecha le'ertamoria, again, walking. Why is walking, traveling, going, the mode in which Hashem conveys some of these critical pieces of Avraham Avinu's life? The Siva Shalom begins uh, opening his essay, with a statement of their Rizal. The Rizal says, Eino dome adam adam, miyom brias adam vahala. There are no two people in the world from the time of creation and up until now that are alike. In fact, he says, there later in the essay, he explains that even a person is not the same at every stage of his or her life. Every moment is different, every circumstance is different. So all the more so, no one person is similar to another person in their time, and even more so, no one person is similar to another person even in another time over the course of human history. No two people are alike. And therefore, Ein Adam Echad Yachol L'Takein Masha Chavero L'Takein. Well, no one person can fix or accomplish that which someone else is supposed to fix or accomplish. The Siva Shalom unpacks this phrase a little bit. He says, Hainu, Shalakol Adam Yash es Yehudo vitafkido oso alav litzakein v'chayav. Every person has their destiny. Every person has their mission. Every person has their purpose and their role, which they are meant to serve in the world, which enables them to bring about the tikkun, the fixing, the perfection, the improvement that they are destined to bring about in this world. Every person is brought into the world for that unique purpose that is particular to them. Why? 
God makes the conditions ripe and all of the particulars of a person's life set up in such a way that they will have all the tools at their disposal and the abilities uh, around them to be able to accomplish their particular mission in the world, to be able to bring about the tikkun that is destined specifically for them in this world. All of the qualities of a person, all the conditions of a person's life, spiritual conditions, physical conditions, good conditions, bad conditions, all of them, were crafted very specially by HaKadosh Baruch Hu and given to one particular person to make it possible for them to accomplish their purpose in the world. Only through those conditions can a person achieve what they're supposed to achieve in the world. They were granted different conditions in life. They wouldn't be able to achieve that end. Every particular person's life is set up in such a way that if they can, and if they try to take advantage of those circumstances, it will enable them to lead to their particular mission fulfillment in the world. Without them, a person will not be able to accomplish that. Because a person's mission is different than everybody else's, so a person's conditions in life are different from everybody else's. We see some one person's life is very easy, another person's life is hard. Everyone has their own way of living, their own mode of being, which you can't compare to the way of living, to the way of behaving, to the way of acting, to the personality of another person. Every person is unique, every person's life circumstances are unique, and the reason for that is because every person has a destiny to fulfill in this world, and all those circumstances are crafted in such a way that a person can uniquely get there, and that no one else in the world can get there because their conditions are not crafted in the way suitable to the accomplishment of this one mission. He says this applies, of course, in the spiritual world and in the physical world. Some people are born with certain qualities, uh, personality traits, and life circumstances that lead them in a particular direction. It's not by accident that that's done. It's very done very deliberately by Kaddish Baruch Hu. Sometimes a person um, encounters a wonderful, easy portion of life. Maybe that was given to them so they have time to focus on something else that they need to be accomplishing. Maybe a person experiences a happy, easy time in their life because they're meant to generate a certain feeling within themselves that will then enable them to accomplish something more difficult. Maybe a person experiences difficult times in their life or difficult traits that they have to overcome. Maybe it's the very process of overcoming those traits or battling with those traits or grappling with those issues that gives them the fortitude to then accomplish the mission that they were set out to perform in the world. Who knows? We don't know why the life circumstances that we live come together in the way that we do, but we have to believe in some larger way that they were particularly suited for us, they were particularly given to us, and that ultimately they will lead us on the path that we need to go in. He says, after explaining this further, Zehu pirush lech lecha me'artzecha u'mimaladesecha u'mbeisavicha lech lecha. So this is the understanding of the phrase lech lecha, go to yourself. Hainu el yudecha. Hashem is commanding Avram Avinu. He says, the circumstances of your life were such that you discovered God. You discovered monotheism. You broke from your traditions of your household and your family. Lech lecha. Use those circumstances. Use your life circumstances to go towards yourself, to your destiny. Al tikkun nishmascha ma Go to the betterment of your soul, to your neshama, to the tikkun, the betterment, the adjustment, the fixing that you're supposed to bring about in your neshama and in the world that you live in. Utilize those circumstances. Harness the particulars of your life towards the accomplishment of your destiny. Lech lecha. Shezeu ikar tafkido shel Yehudi. Because that's the essence of the job of a Jew. Kedi'ita b'toros avos gam. Personally, 
person can daven and do mitzvahs and learn Torah and do absolutely every letter of the law they're supposed to accomplish in this world. And still, after 120 years, they could reach the Kisei HaKavod and Shemayim, and Hashem could say to them, what did you do in this world? The person will say, what did I do in this world? I did everything you asked me. I did X, Y, and Z. I, I davened, I learned Torah, I kept Shabbos, I kept kosher, I said brachos. What, what more do you want? Hashem would say to them, yeah, you did all the check boxes, but the check boxes are only the baseline. They're the baseline to then get you to the place where you can fulfill your destiny, where you can bring about the tikkun that only you in particular can bring about in this world. And if you don't bring it about, no one else can. No one else for the rest of human history can. So the stakes are very high. The responsibility is very high. The responsibility to take a look at your life and utilize the kochos that you were given and the chesronos that you were given in order to accomplish that which you can accomplish as uniquely you. Okay, skipping a little bit, he says, Al Pizeh, Navu, Lebi or Mama, Rabbi Levi. Rabbi Levi in the Medrash has an interesting take. He sees that the first Nisan of Avram is Lechcha, Me'artzcha. The last Nisan of Avram is Lechcha, Eretz Amoria. And Rabbi Levi says, Eini Yodeya, Ezo Chaviva. Haim Lechcha, Me'artzcha, Lechcha, Eretz Amoria. I don't know which is a better test, so to speak. Which is the more beloved test? Leaving your land in your birthplace or leaving to go perform the Akeda? So the reason why, according to Nesiva Shalom, Rabbi Levi says, I don't know which is better, is because both are referring to tests. And there are two types of tests, two types of trials that a person experiences in life. There's one test that we all experience in life, like the test of of breaking with our old patterns, of breaking with our ways, of breaking with our ingrained traits that we have to overcome and ingrained problems that we have to overcome. And that is a mochama, that's a war, that's an effort that continues day after day, night after night, week after week, for the entirety of life. That's something that doesn't go away. You constantly have to battle those things to overcome the negative traits in yourself and to overcome the circumstances of life. But there's a second kind of test. Yesh no nisan ma'akeda. Then there's the test of the akeda. That's a test that is a once-in-a-lifetime test. And in the moment, it may seem much more drastic and much more difficult than the daily grind of the test that you experience, but it's a one-shot deal. It's a one-shot deal. Whereas the daily tests maybe are less difficult, but they're constant. The Akeda test is more difficult, but it's a one-time thing. So you have Lech Lecha and Lech Lecha exemplifying through the life of Avraham Avinu, the two kinds of nisyonos that a person experiences in life. And Rabbi Levi says, honestly, I don't know which one is better, quote-unquote. I don't know which one is worse, quote-unquote. Meaning to say, I don't know which one gets you to your destiny more easily. Is it the constant battle of the daily grind? Or is it the one-time major test that pushes you over the edge in a different direction in life? We don't know. No one ever knows. Which is why our lives consist of a whole gamut of nisyonas, a whole gamut of challenges that come our way and circumstances that come our way to lead us in the right direction because one never knows what piece any of those can play in getting us towards our destiny. Lastly, Nesiva Shalom says, all these tests are phrased by Lashon Halicha, the tests of the life of Avraham, which symbolize the need to overcome and greet all challenges and all good things and all life circumstances is in harness it in order to reach your destiny, to be lech lecha, to go towards yourself and the shorosh nishmascha, and to fulfill the tikkun that only you can fulfill in this world. All of that, which is exemplified by life of Avraham Avinu, is phrased in the language of halicha, because the end of the day, the name of the game, says the Shiva Shalom, is that we don't know. We don't know why every circumstance of life or every moment pushes us in one direction or the other. We don't know why we have certain challenges and certain benefits. We don't know why we were given the personality we were given. We just use it to the best of our abilities to try to reach our destiny, which we'll never know if we truly reached. But the name of the game is Halicha. The name of the game is to keep pushing, to keep walking, to keep growing, to never slide back. 
Because in the moment when you sit down and you say, I don't know. I don't know where to go. I don't know why I'm experiencing this. I don't know where I'm supposed to lead to. I don't know what my tikkun is. I don't know what my yihud is. I don't know what my destiny is. Then you start to give up. You continue to push to the best of your abilities without necessarily knowing my chaviv, alav, which one is better or which one will lead me there faster. We don't know. You just keep trying. You just keep going. You just keep pushing with the hope that a Kaddish Baruch Hu will put the right channels in front of you to lead you to the place of your yud, of your destiny. It's not enough that the Torah says once in the Lashon of Halicha, Lech Lecha, but it says it in three different times to symbolize that in different stages of life, you always have to keep pushing. Avram Avinu's first Lech Lecha was in the beginning of his life and his career in Avodah Hashem, Lech Lecha the command of Hisalech Lafayim and Tamim, the command of the Brismila came at the midpoint of his life. The Akeda command, Lech Lechalera Tamoria, the three Lashon of ha- came at the end of his life. The three Lashonas of Halicha, the three commands and encourages encouragements to keep walking, to keep going, to keep pushing, came at every stage of life to symbolize to us that we too, in every stage of life, in every circumstance of life, have to keep looking, have to keep walking, have to keep growing and pushing. The Siva Shalom says it's essential to our pathway in Avodah Hashem, because in the realm of Avodah Hashem in specific, if you're not walking, you're backsliding. In the realm of Gashmias, in the physical world, you can advance and advance and advance, and every time you advance, you could stop, and you stay there, and you stay static, and you've accomplished what you've accomplished. You may accomplish more, you may not accomplish more, but what's behind you is behind you. In the realm of Ruchmi, it's not like that. Our entire life, our, all of our Avodah Hashem comes together as one continuous cycle. And if you're not moving forward, it means you're sliding backwards. And therefore, the name of the game in life, as we contemplate all of our challenges and all of our good times and all of our particulars of our life that were given to us, we need to remember, number one, that they were all given to us uniquely. Number two, that they were given to us uniquely to lead us in the right path towards our destiny. And number three, even when we don't know where those paths are leading us or whether we're getting there or not, you have to keep pushing. You have to keep growing in all spiritual realms, in all matters of Rosh Hashem, to hopefully continue that process along and have Hashem set out the channels before you that it will get you to your destiny, effectuating the right kind of tikkun that only you can bring about in the world. Shabbat Shalom.